If you want to get into tabletop games, but you find the idea of painting all the models really daunting, this video is for you. This is Patrick from Zulunet. I'm going to show you my setup for painting. I'm going to kind of get you into my mindset whenever I am painting. And I'm going to show you a few tips and techniques as I go through and I paint this model here. This is a pox walker. It is a death guard model. It's kind of like a zombie sort of thing. If you're not familiar with the Death Guard, um, it's it's a pretty cool model. It's intricate in that it has like a lot of boils and I don't know a lot of a lot of detail in the model in, uh, of itself. But it's also one of those models that you, if you play with pox walkers, you're gonna want a ton of pox walkers out there because just a unit of like ten of them is basically completely useless. So you're probably gonna be painting a lot of these. Well, in a game like 40K, you're gonna be painting a lot of a lot of stuff because there's a lot of things to paint. Uh, you have armies that have hundreds of models in them and that's just one army. If you have multiple armies, then obviously you have multiples of hundreds of things to paint and it takes a lot of time. And uh, if you're anything like me, you find the game super duper fascinating, but once you start getting into that, investing that amount of time and effort and patience, it starts really dragging on your desire to go further. Well, I have stuck with it and I have developed, well, I've not developed, I've picked up techniques uh, te that I use that really shave a lot of time off of uh, the whole process and uh, a few also techniques with, um, well, some gear options. I don't know exactly what you call it, but Anyways, my setup, my my kind of approach to painting, I'm going to show you today. All right, so first off, uh, just a little intro. Like I said, this is for the beginner painters um, and even novice painters. You're not going to see any advanced techniques. Um, you're just going to see it down and dirty. So for those that don't know, models like the ones that you see here, they come in sprues like this. They are... It's just gray plastic that is unpainted. You have to cut them out, put them, piece them all together, uh, which is cool. Some people really enjoy that aspect of it because you can um, you can come up with some really cool poses. Most of the time, there are models of late that uh, they kind of there's only one way to put them together, but you can still do a lot of things like these box boxes. You you can't change it up you, if, unless you want to like start cutting plastic off and doing conversion type of stuff. But anyways, that's how it comes. So you have to get it from here to somewhere over here, right? Um, and that in and of itself is a process. For me, the thing that I find the most daunting is the painting. Um, and so like I said, we're going to paint this. This is where this is uh, base coated. Okay. So I've just taken some spray paint. Now spray paint is one of those things where you can spend 15, 20 bucks on a bottle of spray paint, spray, spray paint that is specifically made for models. And it works really great. It's cool. You can find some really specific colors. I do recommend base coating in, in spray paint or with spray paint. My goodness, spray paint. If time is uh, of the essence, um, if you can just spray it up to that starting base color like I've done here, um, it goes a long way. Don't make the mistake of trying to paint right onto the plastic. You have to prime it. Spray paint goes a long ways. They have specific primers. Like I said, use some spray paint. You can use $15, $20 specific crazy uh, spray paint. Uh, sometimes I use that if I'm looking for that color and that's the only one I can find. Or you can use a uh, four to five dollar spray paint that you find at Walmart. And if they got the color that you need, then they got the color that you need. And if you're like me, I kind of uh, will mold my my uh, my paint schemes to those colors so that I can just go ahead and use <laughs> that spray paint um, and not have to worry about priming it and then and then you know coloring it up the all that stuff. It takes a lot of time. So I've got this model spray painted. Now we're gonna take this model and we're gonna get it roughly to kind of yay quality, right? So all of these models here, I painted using my these techniques I'm gonna show you. 
you can kind of see like the level of quality that we're talking about. Like they don't look bad. They're certainly not perfect. They're certainly not, uh, you know, super duper quality that you pay someone hundreds of dollars to paint an army up for and expect from like a professional painter. Right. But for me, they're good enough. Um, and being that I painted them, that's, that's really all that matters. So we're going to go from here all the way to somewhere over here. All right. So that being said, let's talk about our setup. All right. So something that it took me a while, uh, getting into my painting career to figure out was the palette. All right. The palette, it's what you put your paint on while you're painting. Uh, cause you don't want to paint straight from the pot. Uh, you'll get made fun of for it, but furthermore, you end up, you end up, uh, basically ruining, you know, let me see, you got, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see where there's like a buildup, right? And that comes from opening it up so many times where you open it up and you've got this paint kind of on the back end and it like builds up. And then eventually you get this nice patina of paint. And over time, that will basically create more access of air to get into your paint and dry it out, uh, which is not good for anyone because you just wasted all that much paint. I mean, yeah, you could add some water and spend a lot of time mixing it up. But again, this is all about saving time, so I'm not going to do that. So you want to limit the amount of time that you're leaving that paint open because, it, you know, it's going to dry out. Paint dries. Um, and then there's just many reasons. So you want to use a palette. Okay, so I use a wet palette. I started using a dry palette. The wet palette is the, absolutely the bomb. Like it had just completely revolutionized my painting. So if you're if you're just getting into painting and you're frustrated because you're hearing everyone being like, oh, never paint from the pot, man. Like that's such a noob move. But you, the second you put it on a dry palette, you get like a couple, you know, a couple paint dips from it. And then all of a sudden it's dry and it's going on the model all weird and you're really frustrated which is where I was at before I discovered the wet palette, I suggest using the wet palette. So you can go out, buy a fancy wet palette. I don't even know how much they cost because I make my own. So my wife, she went and got me this like metal enamel sort of thing that she found on sale from Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, so you keep your eye out for something like that. All you need is just something that holds the water, right? Before my wife got me this, I was just rocking it out of a, like a tub of wear, right? That I, some crappy tubware that we had laying around the house that we never used because it just looked gross and uh, cleaned it out and it was, it was good enough, right? It worked. So that's all you need. You need something to put the water in or something to put the pallet in uh, paper towels, right? This is a, a, a layer of paper towel and then parchment paper. Okay. And you just put the paper towels down, put the parchment paper over it and you take water and you just kind of put it in the edges, kind of roll, roll it around like so so you get the uh the water completely soaked in there and you're good to go We've talked about how to set up a wet palette now the reason why you want a wet palette it's just it's huge okay so you basically the the moisture that's captured in that paper towel that's beneath the parchment paper uh, the parchment paper being the uh the type of like paper that it is, it allows the, the water, the moisture to sweep, to get up through the paper. And it basically, it keeps whatever you put on the parchment paper, AKA your paint, nice and moist, right? So here is actually an example of some, some paint, the paint that you see on here, I put on here last night, right? And you can tell that it is still obviously moist and I could throw it on I could throw it on a model and paint, right? So it, it, you can, you can have paint on your wet palette for a really long time before it actually goes bad. And even then it's like, you could just maintain it with, you know, add some little water, add a little bit of water, mix it up and you're good to go. Uh, and that kind of allows you a, to get a lot more out of your paint, a lot more out of a session. Cause you spent a lot, you spent a lot less time 
messing with your paint, getting more paint on your palette. Uh, you just put a big blob on your wet palette and you're good to go for a good long while. So you instantly save a lot of time just by doing that. And uh, you can also do some pretty cool things uh, like blending paints. Uh, you can you can do like it's easier to blend on the model if you're trying to do some more advanced techniques if you use a wet palette. So basically, bottom line is I strongly recommend using a wet palette. It is solid and you can just make it like I said at home. Parchment paper costs a couple bucks at, at the grocery store. Paper towels, everyone has paper towels. And you just find something that can hold the water and you're you're good to go. So brushes. Brushes, there's plenty of brushes out there. Um, if it works for you, then it's it's the right brush. That's the general rule. All right, so I, for one, I really love these chiseled, chipped sort of uh, brushes, right? Uh, Citadel, they make their base, their base brush. It's kind of like that. Right, it's a solid. It's a solid uh, form of the brush because you can. What what I like about it is you can use like just the the tip there, <laughs> and to do like fine work, or you can use that full chiseled edge uh, to you know cover a lot of cover a lot of ground pretty quickly. Um, but whatever, there's a bunch of different brushes for a bunch of different jobs, a bunch of different techniques uh the the techniques i'm going to show you are going to use different brushes but either way you get some good brushes uh that work for you and then you need to maintain them all right so a couple pointers on that like uh, clean frequently okay so make sure that you clean your brush frequently while you're painting right so if you're feeling that paint's kind of starting to come off a little dry a little thick uh just rinse it off in your water thing and uh, you know have some paper towels handy to get the excess water off and uh, doesn't like it takes like two seconds to do that and uh, makes your brushes last a whole lot longer the reason being um, is if you get paint that dries on the brush a it's harder to clean and then it gets in between the bristles and it dries and it expands and kind of makes those bristles pull apart and it can get really annoying and can mess up your brush really fast and kind of caveat to that as well whenever you are using your brush make sure you don't get any paint up near where the bristles meet the uh, the handle right because that is where if you get paint up there and it dries it's just gonna make any effects any bad effects it's going to just be uh, multiplied down there at the end and ruin your brush uh, pretty pretty quick so it goes a long way just to clean it off frequently when you're painting i like to keep a nice moist uh brush right but nothing too crazy i don't want too much water on there uh because then it'll cause the paint to come off really watery and you lose a lot of control or it just doesn't even work and it just kind of acts like a shade instead of paint but anyways that's your brushes you can have you can have chiseled brushes like this you can have nice pointy brushes you can have uh dry brushes like this which uh, you don't get wet and it's called dry right but they're really really coarse you can see how kind of messed up that is but that's okay that's kind of how it's supposed to be uh because as you'll see later it it you use it roughly and it's okay that it is that it's roughed up a little bit so Whatever brush you use, it's good. Uh, just maintain it and uh, use it well. All right, so next, they say you got your, kind of mentioned the paper towels earlier, a little pot for water, and uh, palette and paint and a model. So paint, there's a ton of different paints out there. Uh, I use Citadel just because they're pretty, they're pretty uh, conveniently located. They're usually in all of the different um all the different stores all the different game stores because it's the game workshop paint uh but there's a lot of different ones one that i have heard good things about is vallejo especially if you're using an airbrush which is a whole nother ball game but anyways whatever paint again whatever paint works for you it it's what you use you don't have to get the high-end stuff just to get the high-end stuff you can find good solutions um citadel it's a good it's fine 
that's fine. So we'll be using Citadel. All right. And uh, so I kind of went over the model earlier. Uh, make sure you prime it in a good color that you're probably gonna that you're gonna use on the model. That's what I like to do because it saves me time, so I don't have to paint the uh, the areas that are already covered in the color that I want them to be. Right? It's a pretty simple concept. Okay. Let's get on with the painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the flesh first. I'm gonna use Bugman's Glow. All right. So Citadel they have different types of paint. This is a base paint, which means it's a little thicker. Uh, so you use it obviously as a like a kind of foundation or a base and it uh, covers a little bit better because it's thicker um, and then they have layer paints which are a little lighter and they have different types of like technical type paints so uh, but really I just go for whatever color I want but base paint Bugman's Glow uh, I'm going to go over with that and then I'm going to uh, shade it with this Druki Eye Violet and you're going to kind of get this sort of sickly flesh sort of purpley kind of color out of it. It's pretty solid. I like it. So we're going to go, you see my palette there, shake up the paint nice and good like, and then uh, get a little bit on the palette. I've already got some Bugman's Glow from painting earlier, so I'm just kind of going to supplement what I already got going down there. Um, and then two, the consistency with this feels pretty good because it's been kind of leaching the water for overnight. But uh, normally, you'll get it on there; it'll be pretty thick, and you might want to get a little water, mix it in there to kind of lighten it up. Uh, you're you're looking for a right consistency where the paint just comes off nice and easy. All right, so good to go. All right, so I've got this all this excess paint. Um, I'm going to get it on the model real quick. Sometimes if I'm, if I'm like doing like, uh, kind of light detailed work, then I'll just go ahead and get all that excess paint off, uh, just so I don't mess up anything else. Um, but once I just get it off, cause I want to use that paint, just then kind of at that point, right. Give my brush a nice little clean because that paint was up pretty high and I really like this brush, so I don't want to mess it up. All right, so excess water off. And then, yeah, you just go through and uh, paint the flesh, the fleshy bits. All right, so you kind of notice on this model the different elements. Planning is a big part of painting. You definitely want to have an idea of how you want to get your desired effects. Um, like I've used this combination for this kind of death guardy zombie flesh before I like it so I don't have to think about it um, you can find a lot of really good resources online or like on YouTube as far as uh, painting schemes that people use that are tried and true uh, but I've I've started a few models where I had no idea I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna see how it goes and it ended up looking really, really weird and really, really bad. <laughs> you know, so maybe you've got a good natural eye for it. That's cool. I don't. So I've got to kind of rely on the people that have already gone before me or just really, really simple, um, really simple painting schemes that are hard to mess up. So... Here we go. So that's pretty much done. You kind of got these these like bony or like horn bits up here. Um, he looks too, he's got like a boot on, but the rest of his legs are uncovered. So I'm going to flesh those up real quick. Um, and another thing with planning your paint as well, like your ear, your paint job is the order in which you paint it, right? So you could, if you paint it in the proper order, then you can be sloppy when you're laying down kind of your bigger coats that you're spending a lot of time doing. The reason being is because you're going to go back and paint over the areas that you, um, 
that you kind of painted out of the lines with. You're going to go paint back over those areas with colors later on. So you can afford to be a little sloppy, but at the same time, you want to always paint as clean as possible because it just saves A, it like kind of saves you heartache later on, and B, it's just good practice. You just get better at painting by trying to paint better, you know? It's like a simple proverb. All right, so you can kind of see, boom, the flesh is pretty much done. I'm not going to get super crazy in making sure that every bit of the green that was underneath is not colored because to me it just kind of adds to this whole like dirty zombie, dirty zombie sort of feel. Um, anyways... That's done. Next thing I'm going to hit up, I think I'm going to do the metal. Um, so I got some metal still on here. I'm going to add a little bit for the metal. I'm using another base from Citadel, Lead Belcher. It's a, it's a solid one. It's a nice dark, darker one. They make some other silvery metallic ones that are uh, they're pretty silver. I usually shy away from that myself, but it's whatever works for you, my friends. All right, so this paint is coming off a little clumpy. So like I said earlier, I'm just going to get a little bit of water and just kind of mix it to that consistency that I feel is good. And again, I'm not, I'm only painting one model here. So I'm not going to get super duper crazy, but here, boom, you see there's all of this paint all up on these bristles and stuff. So I'm going to make sure that I paint that off or I clean that off really fast. Cause I, like I said, I really like this brush. Um, just shaking it out every once in a while goes a long way to keeping a good brush in good working order. All right. So just kind of lay down this here, this here metallic iron stiff real quick. Um, so that's pretty much, there's that. And then there's like some chain mill sort of stuff going on. So what's cool about the chain mill is you just kind of have to like lightly brush over the top of it. You don't have to paint the whole thing super crazy and make sure you get in all the little crevices um, because the chain mill has good you know contrast and like height and depth and stuff so it once you get that paint to come off on those higher edges of the model you're pretty you're you're, you're good to go so and then he's got like some nails coming through one of his horns here so i'm just going to kind of touch that and boom that's all the metal that's all she wrote solid. All right. So metal's done. I'm going to go ahead and hit it up with, I'm going to do the brown. So I'm going to kind of do these uh, horny bits and uh, the leather, like that leather bit, that stuff, and then probably the boot I'm going to do. Now I'm using uh, steel legion drab. I really like this brown. It's a solid, it's like a really natural looking brown to me. There's some real stronger browns out there, especially in the Citadel, uh, the Citadel catalog. But that being said, here I'm kind of doing like, I don't know. I think this brown works a lot better for kind of dirty zombies. But like another brown that's really strong, it's a really strong brown, um, Mornfang brown. I'll use that a lot for I'll use that a lot like in Space Wolves because I feel like that fits a lot better. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and hit up this here. Uh, yeah. So there's like a little over part to this boot and there's the boot itself. I could get crazy here and paint them differently. However, and like, I don't know, do like a, do like brown and black or something, but I don't even have black in my paint scheme right now. And kind of prove a point, 
I am, I'm not going for super high speed models here. I'm going for super high speed painting, right? So to kind of show you like, yes, yeah, so you can go and you can spend a little bit more time making a better looking model. There's plenty of people that will say that that is worth it in and of itself. It's really satisfying to make a really good looking model. I've done it. I've spent the time on one model making it look really, really good. Um, but I'm talking about some pox walkers here. These are zombies. There's going to be like 20 or 30 of these roaming around the battlefield. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on each and every one of these guys because I don't have that time in my life. If you got that time in your life, go for it. If you want to spend it that way, go for it. But the whole point of this video is to kind of give you guys some ideas of how to do things a little quicker. So there are some elements of painting that are just going to take some time to build up kind of this, this skill. So like me being able to paint that in between there and not touch those like iron spikes. Um, that's just a little bit of skill. There is a little bit of green left over in there, but I'm honestly, I'm not going to get crazy and worry about it. You'll see why later there's going to be some shade action, some shady stuff going on later that, uh, it'll cover up a lot of that. And then at the same time, again, point of the video, show you how to do things quick and kind of be like, Hey, Another thing I'm trying to get at here is like, it's okay to not have every freaking model that you ever paint be 100% perfect. Um, it's okay. It's fine. Like a lot of people don't have painted anything. They haven't painted a single thing in their army. And, uh, and you know, it's always cool to have a painted army, uh, no matter what level. So, all right, so the brown's done. Just kind of... One over it, boom. Now all the base for this model is done. I'm done with it. That, that took longer just because I'm sitting here talking to you, but that did not take very much time. So once you get your like your wet palette going and you got all your paints out and you're kind of set up and you know ideally the way that you'd be doing this is you want to be painting one model at a time like I'm doing, you'd be painting, you know, 10 or, 10 or 20 of these guys at a time, right? But, um, and the, you know, and the way that you do that is you go through, you do all the flesh at once, and then you do all the metal at once, and then you do all the the brown at once or whatever. Um, and it saves, that's how you, that's how you mass produce paint these armies, or at least that's how I do it. Um, so, but... Even that, even even with me sitting here talking to you and painting this, you know, one at a time, all that base is done. And I'm also kind of burning a little bit of time because I'm letting this, that brown dry a little bit more before I shade it. So while that's drying, I'm going to explain shade. So shade, uh, Citadel, they call it shade. There's also other companies where they'll, they'll call it um, a wash or something. But all it is, as you can you can kind of tell from the sound is it is it's basically colored water that's essentially what it is it's not colored water exactly but it's basically it's got the consistency of water uh, the purpose of shade and it's huge it saves a lot of time adds a lot of depth to a model really really fast but basically um all of these little little deep spots on the model where you're seeing like the little the uh, the, the the boils right or like the eye sockets or on this the little rotted uh, the rotted out parts on the sword right purpose of shade is you kind of can go and then it'll put the shade on the model and it'll go into those deep spots and once it dries it'll bring depth to the model because those deeper areas uh, which would naturally they'd be they'd have like shadow on them because they want to be so light because they're a little more recessed or they'd have like dirt in them or something right uh it makes it look more natural and brings depth to it because you have that contrast of the uh the darker stuff in the the, the depth the deep parts of the model 
Um, and then you can go over later with the technique that I'll show you guys called dry brushing and highlight the higher things. So you get dark in the depth, lighter colors on the highlights, and then the, the, the base color kind of in the middle. And you can really quickly make a solid looking model. So I think that's as good as I'm gonna let it get for the drying. So I'm gonna shade it. So like I said earlier, I'm using this Druki Eye Violet for the flesh. I'm gonna go ahead and shade the flesh real quick. Um, so with shade, I don't know if there's anybody else that does it differently. I go straight from the pot with shade because you're not, it's, it's, it's just freaking colored water, right? We can all relax a little bit. All right, so, uh, so there is a nice fancy way to do this where you're going and making sure you only get the deep spots. But the way that I'm going to do it is I'm just going to freaking throw it down on the model. And make sure I have a nice, good amount of shade. I'm using a Citadel shade brush. You might say that it was made for this purpose to throw shade. <laughs> Anyways, yep, so you just kind of cover it. Now, the purpose of being nice and fancy is so that you don't end up with a really dirty looking model. But this is a freaking zombie, so I don't really care if it looks dirty. Um, it's fine by me. And also, too, if you're doing anything in the 40k universe, you can assume that these guys have been going around campaigning, burninating the forest, slaying peasants, and you can assume that they're a little bit dirty. So, like when I'm painting my space wolves and stuff, I still, I do essentially the same thing. I'm a little more careful, but essentially the same thing. And uh, it's fine, it kind of looks like they're out doing war, you know? Like they would be doing because they're freaking space wolves. So. That was the Druki Eye Violet. The other shade I'm going to use is uh, Agrax Earth Shade. It's kind of like a dirty brown. Um, but you got to be careful too with with, with what shade uh, you're using. So you have like the Druki Eye Violet. As you can see, it's a really strong shade. It's kind of this purplish thing going on. So if you're going over something that's not purple, it's going to stand out and it's going to change the way that that sucker looks pretty pretty quick. Uh, so it, you have to make sure that that's that you're using the correct shade, but honestly, this Agrax Earth Shade and Nuln Oil, that's the other um, Citadel shade that, that I use a ton of and is really popular. Nuln Oil is just like, you would use it, uh, it's kind of like a black sort of shade and you'd use it on um, like weapons or things. I use Agrax Earthshade on a lot of stuff because um, it's it's just especially if you're going for that like dirty campaigning look, it's a solid shade. Um, and then too, you'll notice that there's like all of this, all of this kind of pooling up like right there. Cool thing with a shade brush and with shade is you can boom. If you get like a spot where there's just way too much shade going on. You can just drop your brush down, basically just touch it, and your brush will just suck the shade right out. Um, so that's a good way to kind of undo some of your, if you get a little too zealous with the shade, which I do often. I'm, I'm, I'm a very zealous shader. Okay, so at this point, we're going to put this model down and we're gonna start working on this model over here. So I, this is all shaded up. This guy's all shaded up and the shade is dry. This is gonna take a while for this to dry. Um, so, and then again, like whenever you're painting like an army and you have 10 to 30, 10 to 20 or 30 or however many guys you're painting at once, I like to paint 10 guys at a time. Um, but even with these box walkers, I could easily get away with painting 20 or maybe even more because they're pretty simple. Um, you would paint them where, like I said, you're doing one thing at a time to all the models, right? So the idea is I start here on this guy and then by the time I get through the 10th guy or the 20th guy, by the time I get back to this guy, 
with a different phase of paint that I'm going to lay down, it's going to all be dry, right? So you're, again, you're saving a ton of time because you're not sitting here waiting for this to dry. Because if I started painting on this right now, it would really, really mess up everything because there's a bunch of wet shade on there, right? So, boom, this after it dries for a good long while, will start looking like this. So you can kind of see how that shade has added a lot of depth to the model. There's just just, just just with the shade, just the base color and the shade. So honestly, a lot of times, if you're really crunched for time, you could just stop there and it'll be fine. There's a lot of people that just, they leave it at the shade and they like that really dirty look and that's awesome, it's good. I still think it looks pretty decent. But I'm gonna show you dry brushing. Dry brushing is a great technique that saves a lot of time. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Super simple. So the idea behind dry brushing, all right, is you're gonna get a little bit of paint on this here dry brush, and then you're gonna get all, pretty much all the paint off of the brush. You're just leaving just a little bit of residue of the paint on the brush, and then you brush the model with it, and it, that little bit of paint comes off, but because you only have so much paint on there, it just comes off on the high points of the model. So kind of you hit it with the shade, the shade takes care of the lower, you know, the, the, the deeper parts of the model, and then you, you come back with the dry brush and that takes care of the higher parts of the model. So the dry brush is a pretty quick method. Uh, you can also do some pretty other cool things with like dry brushing. Uh, the other option to highlighting is what they call highlighting. <laughs> Oddly enough, but you take a nice, like a super fine brush and you actually paint the high points. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna dry brush because these are pox walkers and uh, it is what it is. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit up this green, all right? The, so this Death World Forest is generally, you now remember I, I primed these a certain color Deathward Force is not the exact color, but it's kind of close to it. Um, so this would be like the base, right? Then you would take a lighter color, like this Strachan green here, so you can tell how this is a lot lighter than this. And this is what I'm going to use. So it's a layer, but I'm gonna use it to dry brush. Uh, they make, Citadel makes technical paints that are, they make dry paints. Um, they're fine, but I like using... See, this is, this is a perfect example of, of how paint can get really out of hand really quickly if you don't take care of your stuff. This is, uh, yeah. If I wanted to do some real painting with this strack and green and not just dry brushing, I'd pretty much, I'd have to get a whole nother, I'd have to buy another pot of track and green. All right, so got some on there. Now I'm going to, as you can see here, I am, I am like, I'm getting, I'm basically painting this paper towel. <laughs> but you can see how I started here, strong color, and I'm getting out over here. And it's like lighter, it's getting lighter where you can't even see it. Um, and you gotta kind of be careful, especially if you want to be careful. It, you can think that there's it, that all the paint's off and you're ready to go, and it really isn't. But nevertheless, all right. So uh, it's about good. And all you do is you just go over the parts that you want, like really roughly. It's really great, and it's cool too because you can you can like immediately start seeing effects, immediately start. At this point, this is when I start getting excited because I'm like making a good model. It's like, oh my gosh, it looks so good. <laughs> Get a lot of bang for your buck at a brush, out of a dry, at a shade and dry brush. Like it's, it's where it's at. I'm telling you guys, it's where it's freaking at. If you are new to painting, you're new to this whole thing, just like learn to shade and dry brush. All right, so you can kind of see how already 
there's a whole lot of like texture and depth added to that to those pants uh, just from that because those highlighted parts those higher points are highlighted with that strapping green it looks real good uh, so the, the, the green is done now I'm gonna hit up I'm gonna hit up the rest of this guy with Now, I'm, gonna, I'm also to, just a little quick caveat, I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna highlight anything on the on the, uh, the weapon metal part, just cause I like that dirty, kind of rusty look, um, because they're zombies. If I was doing some other stuff, they have, I would, I could easily, you know, dry brush that and it would make it look really, really good, really, really fast. But these are zombies and they don't need super clean weapons, cause that would just be kind of weird. Um, all right, same thing, get a little bit, a little bit on a brush there, get as much as I can off on the palette in case I need to go back for some more, and then I am just like I did before, I'm just kind of getting as much of that paint off of the brush as possible, yeah, all right, and then, uh, yeah, so... And um, this is good, to me, this kind of fits for uh, both the brown and the flesh. Um, now, and you do have to be careful that you don't get, you don't leave too much paint on your dry brush. Uh, otherwise, it can be, it can kind of ruin what you're doing really fast if you're trying to be careful like that like so you can see a lot of it came off on a lot of it came off on that face I think it, it still looks fine but if I just kept on going on that face and all of a sudden I'd have a face looking like this color instead of what I'm going after this this sort of highlighted effect all right now what the heck I'm gonna brush that up a little bit um, but yeah, so you just kind of go through and touch up. And you know, if you want, since that, since this would be a good shade progression from this green to that lighter green to like a tan, be a good shade progression or highlight progression. So yeah, just brush up those paints a little bit, make them look good. And uh, yeah, boom, there it is. That is a painted pox walker that looks decent enough for me. Right, so that's that's it. Like you you do your base paints, you do your shades, and then you do your dry brush. And honestly, with those three things, the hardest part is going to be throwing down the like the the, the actual painting, right? The 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 base, right? That's gonna be the hardest part because Especially whenever you start getting into uh, doing like, uh, like, uh, hold on, let me, let me find a freaking model for you. All right, so I got a Bjorn that I painted. And uh, so you can kind of tell, like when you're doing some of this stuff where it's a little bit of like gold over kind of a base sort of thing. Like that can be pretty difficult to get to the point where you can do that fast uh, just because it takes time and effort and learning how to like angle the brush properly. Um, so I definitely spent more time on this model. But that being said, um, you can still get to something close to this quality. And this is this is not like super amazing by any means, but you can get pretty close to that that level of quality um, with those methods. Like this this guy, I painted completely with those methods. Uh, same thing with this. So you can kind of tell. Like it's 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 pretty easy to do what I just showed you. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's my my quick and dirty, my down and dirty painting guide on uh, how to paint something fast, how to paint something easy, and um, kind of my setup 
I strongly recommend using the wet palette. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, let me know. Uh, maybe if I, I could do some more videos. Also, if you want more advanced techniques, my buddy Kyle that does the videos with me, the other the the other Zulunet videos, uh, he's got a full blown painting business, Polar Painting. You can find him on Facebook. He's working on getting a YouTube channel and some videos up uh, for that. And he does a lot more of the in depth, uh, advanced techniques. Spends some time. He's he airbrushes, does the whole nine yards. So that is uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist. Let me know if you like it. And let me know if you want to see any more. Have a good one.